Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We'll give you guys just a couple minutes to join and then we'll get started. We're here with uh, Vigas Kishal. He's the head of growth with Foyer and he's going to be taking the lead today. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. I see Hi. some familiar names. Tommy's yeah. here. Yeah. So many. Hello, everyone. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Give it just another few seconds and then we'll jump right in. And uh, as you join, guys, just uh, oh, oh, on chat, let us know from where you're joining from state, city, country. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy says hello. Hi, Tommy. I'm for everyone's benefit. I'm joining from California. <laughs> Rachel is in Philly. Yeah. Hey, Tommy, where are you? I forgot. Indiana. Indiana. Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> I love Charlotte. All right, guys, welcome. And also, uh, as always, we will have a live Q&A at the end. So go ahead and type any of your questions that come up. Hey, Toronto. Um, oh, hey, Vicky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Germany, Leone, Ezra. Hi, Germany, Leone. awesome. Um, yeah, so be sure to enter any of your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom here, and we'll be sure to go over those at the end. So that being said, uh, for those of you who just joined, we're uh, here with Vikas Kishal today. He's the head of growth with Foyer, and he's going to be talking to you about a few different things. We're going to be going over uh, lead generation. So how to think about bringing in clients. He's going to talk to you about setting up Google ads, generating leads from Instagram, and how to really get qualified leads for your interior design business so that you're not working harder, but rather working smarter. And uh, lastly, he's going to introduce to you something that Foyer uh, has to offer to assist with this. So with that being said, I'll hand the floor over to you, VK. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, pleasure being here. And to everyone, before I start, a very happy 2022. Wish you the very, very best. Yeah. And uh, on that note, I think this is a very relevant topic. And starting the year, uh, everyone wants to plan out their marketing allocations. So we wanted to start off with the session. Uh, let me quickly bring my screen up. I uh, have a few slides to run over, but let me, let me know once you can see it. We can see your screen. Okay. Cool, uh, so let me get started. So this is me, uh, Vikas Kaushal. I team and everyone calls me by my initials, which is pronounced as VK. So uh, I'm head of growth. Uh, I stay in Santa Clara, California. So the topic today is uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, getting qualified leads for interior design business. But uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ping on the chat uh, or you can DM me on FOIA community which is at community.foyer.com or reach me on LinkedIn. Uh, we would love to hear your thoughts on how you're thinking about marketing in 2022. And if you have some top of the mind questions, would love to answer each one of them. So don't hold back, please post it in the chat or reach out directly to me or Rachel on the community, right? Uh, this is my uh, mask image on the community so you can find me there. Uh, cool, uh, and when I'm not doing foyery stuff, uh, you might find me transporting barrels of wine from Napa Valley to the to, to the highest bidder, and uh, and other than that, uh, you might also find me uh, chasing rainbows at uh, some friendly at some not so friendly places. But uh, yeah, that's that's a bit about me. I just want to introduce myself, uh, share some uh, a bit of my background. But uh, here we go. Uh, this is the topic today. Uh, six pack agenda. One is I want to talk about a framework to, th to think about lead generation. There are so many marketing channels out there from you know, your own website to word of mouth to referrals, 
Facebook, Google, Inst Instagram, TikTok. So how do you think about lead generation? How do you prioritize one over the other? How do you allocate budgets? So it's a very simple framework that I'm going to talk about, probably spend around five minutes and happy to take questions. Then we're going to dive into, uh, take a deep dive into uh, setting up and running Google ads. Uh, then also do the same for Instagram and then talk a bit more about what are the challenges, what are the couple of approaches designers follow while they do this and uh, how FOIR can help. And then uh, if you stick around till the end, uh, I'm gonna make you an offer, which you def obviously can refuse, but uh, to turn all of this talk into action, there is a small offer at the end uh, of this presentation. And, and after that, uh, I'll open up to question and answers, but uh, yeah, so, Sounds good, I'm gonna just bring this up. So this is the first uh, thing I think as you as we all think about digital marketing, there's a lot of noise, right? So this drive factor helps you align things uh, in terms of different marketing channels. And so very simply put, there are a ton of uh, things that you own, right? So the drive factor primarily says that all of your digital marketing can be put into these three, uh, these three buckets, right? So there is owned media, which is your website, your blogs, your profile, the email lists that you have, right? Uh, and then there is uh, the paid media, which is your pay-per-click, your display ads, social ads, native ads, and all that stuff where you're investing uh, dollars to, uh, to e either for your branding or for generating leads, right? And then there is owned media, which is, uh, which is where a lot of designers rely on earned media or, or referrals or word of mouth. Uh, this essentially means uh, media coverages, guest posts, uh, you appearing on someone else's Instagram or you, you're starting up something or acting as an influencer. So these three, uh, the buckets in the digital marketing world, they're called the trifactor of marketing. So what's also very uh, interesting is that these operate and have different time and effort, uh, time and cost considerations, right? So if you look at paid media, and if you are thinking of investing uh, in Google ads or something in 2022, then uh, the good thing is that results can come pretty fast because uh, you know you just get into Google ad manager and we'll see shortly how to do that. Uh, and you can set up your ads, put some bids and you, you'll start getting some leads or traffic or whatever your goal on the platform is. So this is uh, this works. This uh, bubble here, it's fast to get results, but it can get uh, pretty expensive pretty fast, right? And uh, while the results are immediate, it might need a lot of active bid management to continue to getting results at uh, at a certain cost per lead, right? Uh, while owned media is mostly one-time investments that you do in the business, like you invest in your website with obviously a flavor of continued investment where you are then investing in blogs, uh, creating more content, uh, distributing some free stuff to your, to your user base. But these are uh, equally important, also tie into branding, but the results from them uh, typically tend to come in you know, mid to longer term. They're not immediate. Uh, earned media is phenomenal. Most of the time it's free. A lot of designers rely on it. Uh, the challenge, however, there that it is it is excellent, but it is, uh, it's not scalable uh, and not repeatable. What I mean is that if you're planning your Q2, uh, you can't really put down a number to say, hey, you know, I'm gonna get these many word of mouths because you know, uh, I'm doing these, these many activities. So that becomes the challenge. Uh, it is amazing to set up, amazing to have in your marketing mix, but when it's it's very difficult to scale right now a lot of designers when you have a brand this automatically scales but just wanted to give you a color of these three separate buckets uh, which which uh, kind of uh, are part of the arsenal of any any marketer and how they vary with with time uh, and the time to results and the cost right so if you have any questions on what all this is about or your specific question uh, on your on your marketing channels again just post it on uh, on the chat and we'll be happy to uh, answer all of those uh, next is a, a simple framework you know there's a i already mentioned so many channels so it tries to uh, it, it starts to become overwhelming it starts to become confusing uh, right and we have questions like how do i prioritize one channel over the other 
would this work for me? How do I find my customer in the in my city? Right? Uh, is this you know what is noise? What is effective and all that? So this is a framework uh, which I came across on one of the uh, sessions with a marketing company and a marketing guru. So I just want to share it. Uh, very simply put, there are a couple of so on. These are like uh, two axes. On one axis, we we have uh, two two major things. One is saying, hey, my customer is actively looking for a product or a solution or service that I offer, or my customer is not actively looking. And on the other axis, it's more it is on is about targeting. So my target customer is very specific, or you know even random folks could buy my product or enlist me for my service, right? So it's a two by two matrix. Just want to uh, split into four quadrants. Now this probably is the quadrant where we want to focus on. Uh, essentially, this quadrant says that hey, you know, my target customer is pretty specific. Right, and my customer is actively looking for a service that I provide. Right, so this quadrant is all about that. The results here are immediate, but uh, these can come at a cost, could get expensive. So, and we'll we'll talk about what channels exactly, uh, in, you know, out of Facebook, Google, Instagram, TikTok, owned media, all that. Which which of the channels fit here, and then what channels go in this? Now, this quadrant uh, is also interesting because you are looking at uh, your tra uh, target ICP, which is the, your ideal uh, client profile, but then the folks might not necessarily be looking uh, at enlisting your service at this point of time, right? So this is how it starts. Uh, so this is the quarter we want to focus on for immediate results. This is the quarter we want to focus on from mid to short term results. This one is ex could be expensive, right? And then uh, these others two also uh, are. Uh, can come into consideration, right? So a uh, bear will be the next slide is going to uh, be a bit overwhelming, but I'm going to break it down uh, channel by channel. So you get a clear sense of, uh, of what channel goes in which quadrant. Right. Cool, so sorry about this, a lot of bubbles, a lot of information, but uh, starting off from where we left, now this is the quadrant which says, hey, these, are, this, these channels uh, are where, uh, sit at the intersection of target customers being pretty specific, right? So these channels help you find those customers. So for example, uh, you're a designer in the New Jersey area and you're looking for leads in only in South, South Jersey, maybe Philadelphia on one side, all the way to Atlantic City, or, and you're also open to uh, probably servicing some parts of Delaware or maybe upstate in New York. So those, those, that is what I meant when I say my target customer is specific and they might have a design preference and they might have a budget preference and all that stuff. And the other thing is, hey, online is my customer actively looking for a solution, right? Actively looking to hire an interior designer or a product that I'm offering. Right? So in this quadrant, what we typically see is a Google SEM, which is nothing but search chats. Now this, they spread across both things. And it is only, uh, you know, it's only logical because people come on Google on search engines to search for something, right? So when they there is a real intent on finding or finding a solution or reading more or learning more or getting more information. So there is Google uh, search ads right here. Then you have SEO. So if you do good SEO, uh, people will find you. Google will rank you. Folks who are looking for services will come to you. Uh, there are review sites, there are trade shows. If there's some trade shows that are happening because that's where buyers go, that's where sellers go, it's a good point. And then if I go in this quadrant, uh, which is hey, folks might not actively be looking, but they still fall under the purview or are very similar to the persona or the clients that we want to service, right? So Facebook, Instagram uh, are social platforms. So people typically don't come, but then it's a good place for uh, for designers, for brands to show up, be, be become the top of mind. So when a need arises, uh, they are the first brands that the customers will contact. So YouTube comes here, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram, direct email, outbound. So you'll see a bit of owned media, a bit of uh, paid media right here. Right? And then if you go in this quadrant, uh, it's mostly people are not actively looking uh, and this could, this could fall outside of your target customer base. But then uh, if you're a bigger brand and then you, you have exhausted all other channels or you've already put everything else into your mix, then you might want to start considering this. And then uh, 
I think this quadrant is more, uh, in my uh, understanding, is more applicable to e-commerce sites or folks who are actively selling, because uh, you know Amazon ads and all these things work, but uh, only for a certain types of businesses. So this is the framework. It is uh, we we use it at Fire all the time to plan uh, to plan our marketing initiatives to see what works, what what is not working. Uh, each bubble has its own time and cost considerations. This one is the most immediate if you want to get a quick boost to your business. And if you can crack this and crack this at an optimized cost, then this can become extremely repeatable, extremely scalable. This quadrant here takes more time, right? Uh, but is also scalable and so on and so forth, right? So things to remember uh, or when you're thinking about your marketing, lay out your channels here. Uh, see which quadrants they come, uh, how much of allocation in terms of your mind share or wallet share you're going to do in 2022 uh, might help you uh, think through your marketing initiatives, right? And as you apply, if you have questions that come up later, uh, yeah, reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to assist you, right? So with that said, that kind of, uh, these are the two frameworks, the trifecta and uh, this two by two framework that I wanted to share. And uh, let me see. So let's move on next. So search ads, right? <laughs> and and uh, we've been talking, I've been talking personally to a lot of interior designers all across uh, the United States, Canada, UK, uh, Singapore, Australia, right? And uh, what I can tell you is that search ads work, right? Now, obviously, it, it is a, it, these are complex ads to manage and you need to you know, have the right mindset. Uh, you have to understand a number of uh, technical things that happen uh, before you can set up and run search ads. But the bottom line is that a lot of small businesses run search ads. Uh, they, they help customers discover their brands and in the end, they end up making a lot of money. But it has to be uh, treated with you know, a lot of caution because it is expensive. If we don't have the right limits in place, it can spiral out of hand, but it works, right? It is where this is... Uh, Google search ad is where the intent is. So a lot of folks who are searching for anything would, would show up. And if you can uh, put your ad out there, uh, you, you can actually uh, get a lot of great uh, qualified leads, right? So uh, yeah, I think just want to uh, digress a bit. To, on the session today, I'm not going to talk about branding. How do you find your ID client profile or targeting and stuff? We have done a bunch of courses on the FOIA community where you can go and learn. Uh, happy to send you the links, but yeah, just want to keep the focus on uh, running Google ads uh, and not kind of defining what an ICP or what your uh, qualified customer could be, right? So back on search ads, uh, typically four things that you need to always keep in mind, right? First, start off with a goal. Decide how much you can spend. Don't make it, uh, you know, uh, the other way around. Don't say, hey, because, you know, the designer next door is doing this, I have to spend, I have to compete because, like I said, it can spiral out of hand fairly quickly. So start with a goal, decide how much to spend, right? Uh, if you have $500, good enough. If you have $1,000 to spare, good enough. But have that limit, have goal in mind before you even begin uh, setting up or thinking about Google Ads. Uh, the second step is select your audience. Uh, and I'll walk you through the screens, but this is the summary of how you set up and run a Google search ad. So audience essentially means what geolocations uh, you uh, you want your ad to show up. Uh, Google has a network of sites, search network is one, and then they also have display networks. So you want to figure out which one do you want to select. Uh, I would say go for search if you're just going for uh, lead generation. And then third part is uh, keywords, right? Keywords are nothing but search terms. Uh, for which you want to bid and you want your ad to appear. So if you want to bid for interior designers in Philadelphia, right, you might want to bid for interior designers in New York. Uh, and once someone searches, your ad might appear. And then the third, the third component of running a successful Google campaign is setting your bids. Now, the way Google works, it's the bid is always the maximum bid. So if you want to bid for, again, to coming back to my example, interior designers in Philadelphia, and you say, hey, I'm ready to bid uh, $2 per click. So the Google, how Google will think of it is that is the maximum bid that you're willing to offer to get in front of the customer who's searching for interior designers in Philadelphia, right? And there are a couple of bidding strategies uh, that are typically seen on Google. 
One is uh, kind of an, a smart bidding and an automated strategy. A lot of brands which start off uh, rely on that. It's it's all driven by AI. So Google will take care of all kinds of optimizations, right? But you have lesser control uh, on your costs, right? You can place some limits, but generally uh, that's the main demarcation. So when you're setting your bids, know what your bid is. And secondly, pick a optimization, a bid, a bid strategy. Uh, it could be automated. It could be manual. As brands mature, they, they play a hybrid of both strategies. Uh, we at FOIA do both, depending upon if whether it's a newer keyword, a newer region we are targeting, or it's an established keyword and our maturity in that in that region. Right. Fourth part, obviously, uh, you have to get in and write the ad. So it's the ad copy that shows up uh, on the Google when someone in searches. Uh, it, there are very strict guidelines that Google has, but there are you know if you just Google for uh, how do you write a Google search ad, you will get those guidelines. But uh, it's very important to write the right, right use the right words, uh, and uh, you know, no copyright infringement because Google bans your ads if you do that. But uh, how how so have an offer, have a hook, and think of various ways to you know write a good copy. Uh, once someone clicks on the ad uh, on on the Google search network, you essentially are taken to a landing page. So you might also have to create a landing page where, where you're giving more information uh, to your customer about what your service is. A lot of people use their own websites. Uh, you, you use that. The only uh, caveat there is in make sure that your, uh, that your website is uh, mobile friendly because if Google sends traffic and it, it takes more time to load, your quality score, quality score of the ads goes down, right? Uh, so just to summarize uh, four basic steps, start with a goal and a spend in, spend in mind. Uh, select your audience based on uh, your qualification criteria, the location, and your keywords. Set your bids uh, that it is the maximum bid. And uh, the good thing about Google is you you only pay them once someone clicks. So you're not you're not charged for impressions, right? And then uh, figure out a good copywriter or write a good copy for your ad. So this is typically uh, any any Google ad that is run. Uh, has has these structures so i'm not going to dive uh, like and take up a lot of time here but i just want to uh, let this slide be i'll share my slides but the idea is just to introduce you to what what is the campaign structure inside google essentially you have an ads account which is uh, where what determines your billing currency and time zone then you have campaign uh, campaigns that you set here like i was giving an example if i'm going to run a campaign for to find interior designers uh, or come in front of interior designers in philadelphia so that happens at the campaign level. You set your budgets, you set your bid strategy I already spoke about. Then your ad groups are a combination of keywords. So these are the keywords that you're bidding on. And then uh, actual keywords, targeting, what are the limits? What is the quality score? So Google pays a lot of attention to where are you taking the customer after they click on your ad. So having a good page, a responsive page, which loads pretty fast is very important. And then are you, match type essentially means are you going to bid for exact keyword or are you going to allow for some bit of uh, you know broad matching so so all these are technicalities but uh, you know just want to leave it here to introduce you to the structure you can always come back and refer to these uh, these slides uh, very quickly in in two minutes just want to walk through, walk you through for you those of you who've never seen google ads manager this is how it looks uh, I'm not getting, getting, uh, going to get into details of how do you get to this stage. Essentially, you just go to Google Ads and sign up and you land here, click on new campaign and you land here. So it shows you what, what is your objective, right? If you're looking for qualified leads or traffic, uh, I would suggest leads or website traffic would work best for you. Uh, a lot of brands use Google Ads for different purposes, like for awareness, branding, stuff like that. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, have the goal in mind, uh, up, you know, have that decided, your budget decided before you start all of these activities. So let's say we select leads here, then you can go and figure out what networks, these are the networks I was talking to you about. So we just say search, there is display, there is YouTube and all that stuff. So depending upon what your stage of marketing is, you can select a different campaign type. Uh, and these are some questions that then Google starts to ask. So it, these are four steps to setting up a campaign. So now it's asking us to set up uh, ad groups. So essentially define the network, uh, define your targeting options, what locations, right? Define your budget, 
right? This is your average daily budget for the campaign. What do you want the campaigns to focus on? Uh, you can set a target limit uh, uh, so that it is not crossed, right? You can set uh, a limit on the bid. You can set a limit on the overall spend in a day. All that stuff can be uh, can be controlled and uh, can be configured. I, I really, really recommend that you take care of uh, and you pay attention to these limits because that's what controls your spend from spiraling out of hand. Uh, and then there are a couple of other technicalities, but yeah, if you set a budget, you set a bidding strategy, you should, uh, you should be good to go with Google Ads. Right? Uh, you give your names and these are certain keywords, like this is a screenshot of our uh, Google Ads. So we try to get in front of folks who are searching for floor plans for our, for our Neo software for folks who are looking for home floor plans. And you can, uh, it's not that you just can bid for one keyword. So we have uploaded around 300 odd keywords uh, and given it to Google to say, if someone searches for this, uh, you know, make FOIA ads appear, and then we take them to a landing page and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, and then these, this is where you write the copy. So you can, uh, like I said, there are, uh, headline, there are co components to this copy uh, and Google will tell you, give you a preview of how this looks. So make use of all these tools. There are a ton of other helpful tools that Google provides in terms of how to search keywords and all that. But uh, yeah, this is just, you know, like a primer, like introduction to Google Ads. There is more to it, but I just wanted to put it out there uh, for those of you who've never looked at Google Ads or are thinking about Google Ads or, are, or work with an agency who does Google Ads for you. Right? Cool, uh, switching gears. Uh, I know this might get a bit uh, geeky. We are geeking out on a lot of digital marketing, online marketing stuff. Uh, but I just want to throw a lot of topics at you today. Uh, I'll share this uh, slides. You can reach out to us for your Q&A, but I hope this is, this is helpful. Uh, so quickly from Google to Instagram. Now, what's the major difference between Google and Instagram or Google versus Facebook or Google versus TikTok. Uh, in my opinion, the primary difference is that Google is all about search intent. People come to Google searching for something while these other ones are more social networks. So you are trying to get in front of folks who are not necessarily looking for your solution, but it's amazingly good for branding, for putting your brand out there, for referrals, for growing your word of mouth. And these, uh, these uh, channels offer advanced targeting options. So you can get very, very specific with, with, uh, with Instagram ads. So you can create audiences by keywords, uh, lookalike audiences. You can tell, hey, this is what my persona is. Facebook, can you find similar customers? Or you can say, hey, I want to place ads on all those folks who follow a certain brand on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, and it, uh, these, these networks will show you that. So that's the primary difference, more targeting options, right? But less, less intent, more about people are here for browsing, but still works for a lot of brands. Uh, a similar process uh, to setting up all of these ads, um, right? You have set up an auction, you figure out what your, uh, what, what is your main, main goal for the campaign, right? So I'm not going to bore you, but I want to quickly show you some screens. Uh, as you define your audience, you'll, it will tell you what's your reach, what's your spend, which is very interesting. That's only what uh, Google, uh, sorry, Facebook and Instagram do. You can define your daily budget, very similar to what I told you about Google Ads, and then you're good. Uh, interesting example, this is our webinar that we're doing. We promoted it uh, on Instagram for a couple of days. So just wanted to show you some uh, real screenshots of how these ads work in the background. So we said, hey, we want to show a single image ad. You can choose a carousel ad, you can choose a video ad, all that. We defined what media, what placement, so you can see all the previews that uh, where the ad will appear, so on the feed, on stories and reels, and you can try multiple graphics. Uh, there's a headline, again, this is just dummy join webinar. You can have a good, nice copy written here with an offer. So yeah, so this is uh, Instagram ads for you. Um, Again, you know, diving and actually setting up Instagram might take a session of its own, but I just want to give you a flavor and color of the, how these things work uh, so that, you know, as you research more, as you think through these channels, uh, you might want to come back to these slides and refer and it get, get, gives you a kind of a bit of a head start. So 
Before I go there, I think I just want to share a good resource that uh, we at FOIA refer to. So there is all the all the ads that uh, that you see on Google, sorry, on Facebook and Instagram. If you go to Facebook ads library, which is facebook.com slash ads slash library, you can search for any brand and get a sense of what ads they are running. This is very, very critical when you're researching uh, to figure out what is your positioning. So I was just searching before the session, hey, what were the ads that DoorDash runs? Right? So you can see all the ads that they are running here. Uh, this is part of the, uh, I think now the transparency policy that Facebook and Instagram have. So you can look at what these ads are, what is their copy? So it gives you a good comparison what you're up against. Uh, again, this is social and not Google. So you'll have to create, uh, invest time in creating graphics and all that stuff. But it's a great resource. Uh, our team uses it all the time. Most marketers I know use it all the time to look at what their competitors are doing, what's the copy, what's the trend, what's what's the media type like graphic or video that's working. So yeah, take full benefit uh, benefit from this. It's free. Uh, just Google for Facebook ads library and uh, set your region. Uh, select the name of the brand. So if you want to see Apple, I can say Apple. The page will appear. Uh, I don't think Apple does. Yeah, they don't do too many ads. So but you can search for any brand, right? So I might want to put in fire here. So, so what are the ads that were currently running? This It is slightly dated information, but yeah, you can see all of this here. Cool, so coming back, uh, this is a lot of hard work. <laughs> running ads, uh, optimizing campaign, it needs a very good mix uh, of both sides of the brain, the left and the right, right? So it, it tends to get analytical. Uh, but the, what, what I would say is, uh, you know, if you learn it once or if you set it up once, it becomes easier from there. So the tough part is to get started knowing all these terms. You might have want to invest uh, some time in learning those. But the good thing is it's one time. Once you learn, then you're only probably looking into your ads account once a week or, you know, maybe twice or thrice a week if you want to adjust your bids. But that's pretty much it. But yeah, I would not deny to setting up all of this. It might sound overwhelming. It's a lot of work. Uh, so typically designers, uh, in my experience, rely on four major uh, means of running ads or running a, a lead generation. They are either doing it themselves, uh, they hire a marketing agency, or they, or they kind of give money to lead providers like House, Home Advisor, uh, and all the good brands, or they tend to hire slightly larger design firms uh, and end up hiring a a PPC analyst or a Google analyst and stuff, right? But yeah, I think there are obviously challenges. There are lock-ins, you have contracts, you have to pay agencies retainer. The time to realize ROI is could be anything from one to three months because they come in, set up ads, know your brand and all that. It requires your time and effort to, uh, to kind of bring them on board, right? To also uh, review the ad copies, the budgets every day. And even doing that, there is a risk that uh, you get outbid by large brands like Foyer gets outbid by House and so many other brands all the time, right? Like big companies like Adobe, there are companies who bid on our brand name uh, and then show up their ad, but that happens. That's the reality of life, uh, reality of life in the online space. But uh, I think with some uh, tweaking with a lot of uh, uh, understanding of the domain research these this can be you, know, you can turn the turn turn the tables on them but, uh, but this is the, this is a reality you do get outbid by large brands because if you increase your bid on google their ad will show up in place, in place of yours right so yeah i think we probably have around uh, 10 to 12 15 minutes maybe so i'm just going to go to the last part which is foyer boost which is uh, our attempt uh, of done, for, it's, it's what we are calling as done for you, Luigen. Now we have had a lot of experience running ads on all platforms for almost two and a half years, uh, plus around you know 5,000 to 6,000 designers actively use our product and each week thousands of designers try out free trial or product. So we, we have learned from our conversations, what is that designers need uh, so, so that we can write uh, you know good copies. So FOIA Boost is, uh, is, a, is an automated way uh, that we are now trialing out. The first uh, cohort is live, uh, the January cohort, where we are talking, we are onboarding designers and running these campaigns uh, 
programmatically and giving them leads. So at the end of the day, what designer gets is, is we give them a small CRM and uh, uh, whenever a lead comes, they just see these leads in their CRM. These are qualified leads, uh, verified phone numbers, verified uh, you know uh, budgets and all that. And then they can just have a conversation right, directly with the customer. So uh, we are not going to ask you for any long-term retainer. You can go month on month. Right, uh, there is no setup time uh, because uh, that's what that is uh, the flavor of done for you. Uh, all you get is leads, so you don't have to worry about all optimization bids, bid management, and all that stuff. We are not going to ask you a ton of your time in reviewing copy ads, bids, looking at analytics. So you can leave that all to us. Uh, and essentially, what we offer is you can onboard on Foyer Boost. Boost.foy.com uh, is uh, is the URL if you if you're interested in signing up. It's a lead generation, lead management uh, uh, system tool plus a couple of others, uh, you know, couple of the tactics, uh, if I may say, that we have learned over time. A uh, couple of plays. How do you handle scenarios of high bids and all that? So we'll have you onboard it. We do a 45 minute launchpad session. Uh, Boost is not live on our website, so these are the only, this webinar and the URL that I gave are the only two ways. Uh, yeah, so you after we get you onboarded, uh, we do a launchpad session where we understand what are your preferences, what are your ICP, help you with some frameworks, do an audit, uh, and then you know yeah, and then get cracking and leads uh, start showing up in your dashboard in probably under two days, right? At time, some in in some cases it might show up on the very same day. So that's Boost uh, again. Uh, the offer, as I say, if a few of you have at least this point of the presentation, uh, what we are offering is uh, for, for my first two cohorts, which is January and Feb, what we are asking, uh, offering is a 30-day risk-free uh, or 30-day money-back guarantee, 50% off of the first month if you use this promo code, which is Foyer Boost 2022 We are also throwing in a free Instagram audit of your uh, Instagram handle. We, which essentially will will tell you what hashtags to use, what 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 are some low hanging fruits for your uh, for your Instagram profile. We'll also do a, if you happen to have a website, we are happy to do a free SEO audit, and then one hour of strategy call a call like this where we think we help you think through your marketing goals for 2022. Right? Uh, how do you get in? Like I said, go to this URL, select the service you offer, select your city. If you're not able to find the city, uh, just select the nearest city and we'll take care of it when we speak to you on the launchpad session. Select the plan, enter the promo code, get your discount, pay, and then you're onboarded. There are two plans. The seed plan gives you 10 leads. The group plan gives you 20 leads. Uh, it is open to uh, most places uh, in, in the US, uh, in Canada, and select cities in Europe and India. So if you have any questions around, hey, if your city is there or not, uh, DM me or Rachel, but uh, and the reason I've had a star here in the East Coast, uh, so a couple of guys who started in the Jan cohort have want to start, you know, want to take a pause. So we have some uh, spots open for folks on the East Coast right now uh, who want to get into the Jan cohort. And uh, yeah, so so make uh, you know uh, take full benefit of the offer. Uh, we are here if you need any uh, any need any help in thinking through your marketing goals. But with that, that's pretty much uh, what I had. Um, uh, Rachel, back to you and happy to take questions. Uh, and like I said, if you run out of time, please leave your questions behind. I will reach out and uh, answer each one of them. Right. Awesome, thank cool. you. I, well, I'm so happy and I was gonna ask if this was still just for the uh, for the US. So I'm glad that you yeah. brought that up because I know Ashna who's on the call is very interested in this. So hopefully we're offering it in the Netherlands, Ashna. Um, yeah. We'll find out. No, how. absolutely. Exactly. And uh, we'll see. I think it, it scales region by region. But uh, by uh, when we launched in end of December, we only wanted to do the US and only the East Coast. And then we expanded. So happy to get uh, folks to try out, uh, try out Boost from all parts of the world. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. I'm so glad that we're able to get that for her. All right. Let's jump. We have quite a few questions. So let's mm -hmm. jump right in if you're ready. Uh, let's see. First question is, I don't have owned media. Is it important to generate leads? Uh, in the, if you're just starting up and you don't have owned media, it's not uh, like, you know, not super important because like I was mentioning for Google ads, all you need is a landing page. 
right? Which you can quickly create on any of the free websites. Uh, and that is the that is the beauty of these uh, you know ad ad platforms that you do not need own media. If you can write a good copy, uh, you know your bid. You can just stand up a single landing page, uh, and then you're good. And in case you have an Instagram handle, you don't you might not even need that. But the the thing to bear in mind is there should be a clear uh, endpoint for for the for the customer, right? So till that is insured, you might if you don't need a fully functional website. Could be a single page. It could be you know anything. There are so many free tools out there. Notion. It could be a Google form which is free. But take the customer because if you are not doing that, then Google penalizes you. Your quality score drops, and you know for the same customer you end up paying more. So, but not necessary. There are there are free tools that you can do. But please ensure that there is an endpoint for the customer who's clicking on your ad, which is super critical for both of these platforms. Yeah. Gotcha. The for your portfolio be one of those. Yes, it could be. Uh, like uh, <laughs> I've been talking to the product team to make it uh, super SEO efficient uh, and super responsive, super fast. So it loads. Uh, but for folks who sign up for Boost, I think we'll take care of it. So, uh, right. but yeah, there are a lot of free tools out there, Unbounce, which help you create a landing page very, very quickly, Wix.com, right? So uh, just create a page or a form and you should be good to go with ads. Gotcha. Okay. Next, we have um, currently I can't afford to pay uh, for marketing and doing and I'm doing business organically, mm -hmm. but I'm not able to scale. In allied partnerships, will model flat work in builder partnerships? Can you help me with your insights on strategy? Maybe I'm not reading this correctly. In allied partnerships, mm -hmm. will model flat work in builder partnerships? Uh, I'm not too sure what the question okay. is, but <laughs> uh, if you could just clarify that question yeah. for us, we have tons more. So go ahead and just yeah, uh, yeah, or just that. just DM us on uh, on the community, just direct message, and we'll we'll probably set up a quick five minute chat to, to answer your question, right? Uh, but sorry, we are not able to understand. We'll have to move on. That's okay. So, uh, Courtney is asking. I'm just getting started with Foyer. How experienced would you suggest someone is before they invest in lead generation services such as Foyer Boost? Yeah, it depends on you know what stage of the business you are in. So these uh, channels work for everyone. In fact, they work very well for folks. Uh, and that tying it back to the previous question that hey, I don't have an own media, I don't have clients, I don't have a great portfolio, right? Uh, so then how do I source? Because most of the brands in the city would take take away the clients who are actively looking. So yeah, I think uh, if you're starting up, uh, this could be uh, this could be a good way to get your initial leads, right? So yeah, uh, so I'm not sure if that answers the questions completely. But, yeah. Yeah, I would say there's never a bad time to have your yeah. ideal client rolling in, right? So exactly. Um, and uh, and typically with digital marketing, right, at different stages, uh, any business will optimize for different things, right? You optimize for uh, initially you want business, so you optimize for lead gen, you're out there, you know, spreading the word about your business, sign up a website and all that. So you're hustling, right? And then there comes a stage when you're slightly established, then you throw something else in your marketing mix, maybe invest in Instagram website content, which is more long term, but in each, in, it is higher invest upfront investment and the results come after you know, six months. Uh, and then you are starting to grow, grow your brand. So you people, then you become kind of an influencer or you get published. So uh, depending on what stage of the business you are in, uh, the good thing about these channels is that they work across all stages. But then if you're struggling to allocate money uh, and you take a decision between Google ads or something else, it all comes down to what you're thinking of doing uh, you know, with your business. So, yeah. And just from my own experience, relying purely on organic growth, which we have some questions about that. Right. I, you know, started with Foyer. I spent a full year <laughs> posting renderings of designs for literally almost every day, trying yeah. to organically grow a following, um, reaching out to people, trying to just organically gain uh, leads. And what I found was that a, a lot of the leads that I got were not ideal clients. And 
B, it took me a full year before that actually worked, um, before I actually gained, you know, without paying anything. And I wish now looking back that I had spent some time or, you know, had four year boost been available at that time, I would have jumped on it because not until that experience starts rolling in that you're able to really hone your services who that ideal client is, because it's one thing to kind of hypothetically think about who that ideal client is, but until you actually have a chance to work with that person, um, you don't know for sure, right? (laughs) So for me, thinking I knew who I wanted to work with and then waiting a year and then realizing that's not the person I want to work with was a lot of (laughs) wasted time. Right, Um, right, yeah. So yeah, organic growth can be really challenging. Um, So even though you're new, I wouldn't say that that's a reason to, certainly not to to avoid something like yeah. actually bring in clients yeah, yeah and then that's where the the trifactor and the framework helps so you have to it's not one channel you know at one time you can activate two channels one is more long term so you should invest and allocate time and effort and costs and money there while the other one gets you you know puts <laughs> puts food on the table kind of a thing so so you have to be strategic about it and it's now a good time to think about it. Organic works, you have to invest now. You see results in some time, like in Rachel, your case and here. Uh, so you have to be patient with those channels and continue to do the hard work while the others could give you, you know, quick results. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, so there is a question on organic growth. Can you mm-hmm. please share some strategies for organic growth from your past learnings? <laughs> so kind of talking <laughs> about what we just said. Yeah, well, I think top of the mind strategies is if you uh, for organic growth, uh, if you have a website, uh, please optimize it for responsiveness for mobile, right? Uh, go to this, uh, just type page speed insights on Google, put in your URL and see what, what is the report that is generated. Uh, Google, I think, I don't, I'm forgetting whether it's from Google or someone, but they give you a score of loading speeds on mobile and on, on desktop. So if that is under 50, you might want to work on it. Uh, that's like top of the mind. Uh, I, I say this to all all folks on Boost on anyone I meet, uh, designers I meet, just to optimize it, improve the speed, do an SEO audit. Uh, if you're part of Boost, we'll do it for you. Just put in those keywords. These don't take a lot of time. So if you're in Atlanta or wherever, somewhere on your page that should show up, put up a contact form, right? Uh, repeatedly say a bit about yourself, about your services, mention it more than once on your page. Uh, do a bit of keyword research, essentially, what are the keywords that you want to be fo- be found for, right? So interior designers in Atlanta or e-designers in Atlanta, then have those keywords in your ho- on your website, right? Uh, so that's like, you know, the kickstart thing that is what you should do, that these are table stakes. If you're not doing that, you're already, you know, not standing. So like I said, these are table stakes. From there, you can build a keyword strategy and then start investing in, in writing content like blogs, uh, help a lot uh, in uh, giving out freebies on your website helps a lot building a list it helps you build a list so uh, there is no short fix there are no hacks to organic growth we have tried at fire we have burned our hand you do not want to be on the wrong side of these platforms a lot of this data is published but you have to continuously keep doing it right but yeah google does so google optimizes for user experience right so speed responsiveness good content uh, at the end of the day is appreciated. So if you're writing good content, uh, Google will, in due time, will start ranking you. But it could be done in two months. Like when we started, any blog we used to publish, it used to take like, you know, anything from three to four months to, to rank on Google. Now, when we publish, the content ranks in under four weeks because two and a half years, we've continuously posted content for a particular community, for a particular domain. And now Google has learned that, hey, Foyer is someone who plays in the design space. So you, for your brand, you'll have to become someone who plays in your specific city, is writing root content, and eventually, uh, you know, Google will reward it. And once it's rewarded, it stays. So it's not going to, it's not going to take it away. So that's the good thing. And it, it's a hockey stick. If it happens, then you get leads, uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> you're, you, when, you, when you're not even asking for. Right, so you're kind of playing the long game there and you don't even it know is what long game. is <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> but it works. Yeah. So it's, these are simple tactics. Right? Yeah. Cool. So a question from Ashna is how does pay-per-click work? Uh, yeah, fundamentally it's uh, on Google, essentially, if you're talking about uh, you, uh, Someone, so for example, as, as a marketer, you put up an ad for you know, interior designers in New York, 
right? So when a customer, someone is searching for it, um, based on your bid, uh, your your ad ad will show up. But you're only charged when someone clicks on it. So that's why it's called pay per click. It's not pay per impression. There is no money to show the impression, right? So that's another very good way of actually increasing your brand because. A lot of times customers, uh, you know, just see it, they don't click on it and you, you don't get charged because it's paper click and not paper impression, right? Uh, but yeah, there are obviously, that's the, at the fundamental level, that's what paper click means. So for the terms that you're bid for, you only pay when someone clicks on the ad, you don't pay for showing the ad for impressions, right? And then uh, the, the, the next level of complexity or next level of stuff you need to figure out is essentially how much are you willing to pay? And what's what's your what's your ceiling, right? So because Google will take away money, you know, <laughs> before you know it. So if you have two dollars a set, and uh, the Google will show you head for this keyword, typical bids are in the range of five dollars, and you're bidding two dollars. So and they, which which means there are other people who are, which are bidding more for the for the search terms. In which case your ads won't show up. So you might have to bid for five dollars, and then come bring it down to four dollars and all that. So. It's 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 bidding. <laughs> That's why it's called bidding for for clicks. But, uh, but at a very high level, I'm happy to uh, dive into uh, in detail or send send you some resources if you're interested. But uh, fundamentally, that's what it means. So you pay for when customers click and not otherwise. Gotcha. Um, Courtney has another question: Is the service for interior design services or renderings through Foyer solely? Courtney, we might need some clarification yeah. on that. Is the service for interior design services? So are you asking just for oh, your yeah, boost is for, uh, If I, I'm getting the question correct, I think if maybe the question is that is boost being offered only to fire customers? Oh, gotcha. Right, for neo customers. I yeah, currently it is. It's not open to everyone. Uh, I hope I'm getting the question right. But uh, if not, again, like I said, DM us or uh, you know, ping us on LinkedIn, we're happy to answer or get onto a call. Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to clarify in the chat box or um, here in the Q&A if that's not answering your question. Oh, is it is it just for rendering or for full service design? Oh, it can be. So yeah, that's actually so, one of my follow-up questions to kind of explain how is right. it that you are um, allowing designers to specify who that Correct. ideal client is it all happens on your launchpad session so it's not that you know you'll, you'll give this money and then we blindly start the ads so we will do a launchpad session understand your preferences your brand any collaterals that you might have right uh, like the the latest session i did we, we spent 45 minutes just to narrow down on the location that the designer wants the ads to show up Right, uh, and if they are open to e-designing, then obviously the the horizon broadens because e-designing can happen from anywhere. What kind of projects uh, that uh, the designer wants to do, uh, like full service e-design, just you know maybe kitchen and bath. So all that uh, all that is taken care of, right? But we are not kind of coming in and managing your ad account. We'll collect all this information, put this into the boost tool that we have built, which then kind of goes and bids for ads. So it's uh, but end of the day, what you would see is uh, a qualified lead, which means you there there'll be a person, uh, person's phone number, email, what is that they are looking for, and that uh, Boost also does that bit of matching. So if they're not the right fit for you, we'll tell you, hey, you know, it's probably not an ad. Do you still want to talk to them? Uh, or if it's exact match, we'll directly send it to you. And each week, right, once you start Boost, we'll have a weekly check-in. That's what started to do. We get live feedback. You say, hey, this is, and we do offer a uh, replacement of leads. So if you uh, don't like a lead uh, before calling, you can tell us, hey, this this some may, looks good, but maybe not for not for me. And then we'll replace the lead. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So you can offer, you know, say so you offer three different packages. You offer a design consultation with no renderings. While right. this is only offered to foyer um, customers right now, it doesn't require that you provide renderings based off of your service packages like renderings yes. that have to be worked into your service package in order for you to gain leads Correct. so you uh, the designer defines everything so we we'll talk talk to you on the launch patch session hey what are the services you offer and then when we run these ads we get that kind those kind of customers people are also worried about timing and there's some like you know i offer everything but 
I need only projects which, which someone is like really interested to get started in like the next four to six weeks. So once we give these leads to you, you're happy to, you can go ahead and have a conversation and let us know your feedback. Awesome, Courtney. Cool. Happy that we could help you. All righty, guys, we are, uh, we got through all of our questions, which is awesome. And right on time <laughs> for the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you, VK. Again, you guys can feel free to email either myself, Rachel at foyer.com yeah. or um, VK at VK at foyer.com. Right. For more information, we'd be happy to talk. And in the meantime, we will see you next week. Thank you so much, VK. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, yeah, let's continue the chatter on the community or over email. Cheers. Awesome. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.